What's up everyone, happy holidays. I get a lot of questions about some of the tools that I use in my shop, so I figured I'd make a list of some of the best purchases I've made over the years, but none of these items are sponsored. I don't have any bias, Every single thing on this list is something that I spent my own money on and I'm still really glad that I did. There's a few splurge items on this list, but most of the items are under 50 bucks and there's even a lot of things in sort of the 10 to $15 range. So there's something for everybody, including a stocking stuffer for your favorite woodworker. I put one of my Amazon affiliate links in the video description below. So if you do go get something, you'll be supporting my channel with a small percentage of your purchase. One of the most common questions I get about my shop is what do I use for my garage floor? These one foot by one foot tiles are super durable. They're designed to park a car on top of and something like a heavy tool chest or a piece of machinery is no problem. I had a really rough garage floor when I moved into this house. It was bumpy, it had oil and glue stains all over the place and this made a huge difference. Not only does it look a lot better in here, but it's also really easy to clean. The underside is contoured so it evens out a really rough garage floor like I had and it also lets fluids pass through it so if you spill something it won't be a problem and they snap together so I think I put my entire floor together in about two hours. They're about two dollars and thirty cents a tile so they're a little bit pricey but for me this was a great investment and about four years later I'm still really happy with it. Another thing that I get asked about a lot are these headphones because people see me wearing them in almost every single video. I went on a big mission to find good quality audio and ear protection at the same time and apparently that's pretty difficult to do. I actually bought and returned probably three or four different headphones before I found these. These are the Sync headphones by Howard Leet by Spirian. These are only 24 bucks and they're the first time I found something that gives you rated ear protection and good quality sound. They do have a cord, so that's the only downside. I wish they had something like this in Bluetooth, but honestly, I tried a bunch of different Bluetooth headphones and they just didn't sound good. I've had these for probably five years now and they're finally starting to come apart where the foam is a little bit, so I'm gonna replace these probably with the same ones. If you know of something better, let me know and maybe I'll check those out. Yes, I do have a saw stop blade guard and splitter on my old DeWalt table saw. And the reason I got this thing is because I wanted something that would give me dust collection. So normally, even with the dust collection under the table, there's still quite a bit of dust that's gonna fly up into your face. And this thing collects the dust in front of the blade so that that doesn't happen. It also gives you the added safety, of course, of a splitter. I wasn't 100% sure it would fit my saw when I ordered it, but when I got it, I just used my old splitter as a template and cut it with an angle grinder and a metal cutoff disc until it fit perfectly in my saw. I can't guarantee that this will work on your saw, but you could always try it and send it back if it doesn't look like it'll fit. Next up, star drive screws. It's such a simple thing, and I don't know why it took me so long to figure this out, but I finally switched out all of my general purpose Phillip drive screws that I keep around the shop for a good variety of star drive screws. They're just so much easier to use. I feel like the jump from slotted screws to Phillip screws is about the same from Phillip screws to these star head screws. Especially if you're using an impact driver, they're easy to drive in and they're even easy to remove if you wanna change something. So I put a variety pack in the Amazon affiliate link for you below. When it comes to router bits, something that I've gotten a lot of questions on is this kind of swooped or whatever <laughs> hand-shaped looking roundover bit that you can get on Amazon from a company called Yonico. But what I really like about it is that it gives you an edge on a piece of furniture or detail on something that isn't your typical roundover. So it looks really unique, really different, and it's only 25 bucks for this thing. One of my new favorites is actually from the same company, Yonico, on Amazon, and it's this rabbiting bit, and it comes in a box set with a variety of different bearings. So you can get different depths on the rabbit. Super handy, I've been using this a lot lately instead of my stack dado set on the table saw. And this one's only about 35 bucks. Something else I get so many questions about in my shop is what I call my hardware store. This thing is solid steel, very heavy, super durable, and it's 16 inches deep, so it holds just about everything I could ever need on a regular basis. It saves me so many trips to the big box store. I bought it used on Craigslist, and I always assumed it was some kind of old army surplus thing, but I'm super excited because I actually just found this exact same unit being sold still brand new on Amazon. So I put a link in the description below for you. Go check it out and get one for your shop. Here's a really simple one, stretch wrap. This stuff is great. I use it for all kinds of stuff around my shop. Stuff like, you know, I'll have a bunch of scraps of hardwood left over that's really nice and I wanna save, but maybe they're smaller. So you can just bundle them all together with this stuff. Very quick and easy to use and throw them on the shelf. They'll stay together and they're just easier to keep that way. Stuff like dowels and even packaging, if you ever wanna send something, this stuff is just a lifesaver. 
This is a rigid oscillating spindle and belt sander. And if you're new to the woodworking scene and you haven't heard of these before, these are a huge bang for your buck kind of power tool. My favorite use for it is smoothing out all the saw marks after cutting curves on a bandsaw. When I looked it up just now, the reviews were a little mixed, but I'm not really sure why. I mean, they're not perfect, but I wouldn't be able to live without mine. They are an excellent addition to your shop. One of my all-time favorite handheld power tools is the oscillating multi-tool. Invented, as far as I know, and made famous as the Fine Multimaster. A bunch of different brands make these now, so I'm a DeWalt guy. This is my brand of choice. But basically, it's an oscillating blade that just goes like this really, really fast, and they're great for cutting just about anything in really tight corners. You can turn these blades different ways. There's a bunch of different attachments, including things like sanding attachments and stuff like that. I find that even the cheap ones that you can get from Harbor Freight, in terms of blades, work great on this tool. They work especially well on things like drywall and soft materials they go through drywall like butter. So for things like cutting an outlet box or something like that, they're just amazing. I use these just for all kinds of things I wouldn't even expect to, but because I have it, I just grab it and use it. These are a great tool. I recently bought these lumber racks on Amazon and I put them up on my shop and I've had a few people ask me about them. So what I can tell you is they're awesome. I used to keep all my lumber out in a shed in the backyard and ever since I put these up, I've been able to keep everything on these racks. They hold a ton of weight and they were really easy to assemble. So I was up and running in about an hour. This is a power tool accessory I wouldn't want to live without. It's a dead man switch. And I put a similar version that I found on Amazon in the link below, but it comes with a cord that you would connect to the wall and one that you would connect to your tool. I use this mostly for the scroll saw because on the scroll saw, you want to keep both of your hands on the workpiece to hold it down, which means that you don't really have a hand for turning on and off the saw. Another place that's great to use it is on the drill press because there's times when you want to handheld something and you can use this foot pedal to just start and stop the tool with your foot so you can keep your hands on the workpiece. These are called wood hand screw clamps. Don't think of these as a clamp, think of these as a tool because I use these for holding things down on the drill press. I use them as jigs on the table saw. They work great in just really weird circumstances that you wouldn't think of otherwise as a jig or as a hold down tool. I keep a couple different sizes around because they come in handy for different applications, but I would definitely recommend these in your shop. Dead blow mallet, especially for assembling furniture, tapping things together without marring the wood. These things are great. I have two different sizes, but I rarely use the bigger one. This one seems to do just fine. This is a one pounder, but it has like shot or sand or, or lead or something in the middle of it. You can hear it shaking. And that actually keeps it from bouncing off your workpiece or, you know, it really transfers the energy well to what you're trying to put together. So you can tap on something and it'll push things together instead of just pounding things together. So these are awesome. If you already have an air compressor and a few nail guns, you have to try a 23 gauge pin nailer. These things are incredible. This teeny tiny little pin doesn't have a head. It completely disappears in hardwoods, softwoods, whatever, but it actually has quite a bit of holding power. So for fine pieces of furniture, boxes, things like that, these are incredible. The 23 gauge pin nails come in a variety of different lengths. Different guns will have a different ranges of lengths that they can actually shoot. I think mine will go from five eighths to two inch so that you can get these pretty long. I also use them a lot for making jigs. Here's another really simple one that I just wouldn't be able to live without, and that's mechanical pencils. I buy these by the 20 pack and just put them everywhere in the shop so that no matter where I reach for, I can find one. And these are the 0.7 millimeter, which are the ones that I feel like they're strong enough so they don't break, but they still leave a really fine marking line. You can get these just about anywhere, but just like everything else, I put a link in the description below just to make it easy for you. If you've never used a random orbit sander, you're really missing out. Not only are these things very powerful, they can remove a lot of material very quickly, but they also leave a very smooth finish. The random part means that not only does the disc spin, but it also kind of does this motion. So instead of a bunch of scratched sanding circles, every one of those little scratches kind of cancels each other out to give you such a perfect finish. Not only that, but they're also very convenient because you can switch sandpaper by just using these hook and loop discs, which are really easy to change out. So going from a rough grit to a fine grit is really quick and easy. Once again, because I'm a DeWalt guy, mine's yellow, but if you're going to look for one of these, make sure you get one that you can connect a dust collection hose to. These things make a ton of dust, but with this connection, the holes in the sandpaper allow the dust to actually get sucked away from the tool. And a lot of the time I can use one of these without even wearing a mask. They're so efficient at dust collection if you hook them up to a shop vac. 
This simple little sanding block has gotta be one of my all-time favorite tools in the shop for only 10 bucks, especially if you have one of those random orbit sanders, but even if you don't, it uses those same hook and loop discs and they just go on here so easily. So switching grits is really easy, but I actually have two of these so I can use two different grits at the same time. They're made of foam, so they're actually kind of squishy, they're easy to use and they're very forgiving. They can get into corners, but they're also wide enough to do a big flat panel. You gotta go get at least one of these things. I love it and they're only 10 bucks. Another great accessory for a random orbit sander is this little round foam pad that actually goes on here like this and then you put your sanding disc on there. And what that does is allow you to go over contours and it'll kind of shape and form itself to whatever you're going over. So things like rounded edges, inside or outside corners, this little pad is just a great accessory. This is my Oneida Dust Deputy Cyclone, and because I do all of my dust collection with a regular shot vac, I could never live without this thing. It's incredible how much dust will go in this, and almost no dust will go into the shot vac. I'll probably empty this thing five times before I even have to open the shot vac to clean out the filter. Oneida makes a few different versions of these things, including one that's just the Cyclone, but I put two links in the description below, one for this exact same unit, and one that's a little bit smaller and more affordable that's just a five gallon bucket. A tool bag. So this is the Bucket Boss gate mouth and I've probably had this thing for over 10 years. It's held up really well and doesn't show any signs of wear even though I've used it for so long. I have all of my tools within hands reach around my shop in drawers ready to go, but if I wanna go somewhere like my parents' house to help them with the project or something, it's nice to have a good sturdy bag that I can load up with tools and take with me. This is called the Glue Bot Glue Bottle, and for only about eight bucks, it is incredibly useful. So with a normal glue bottle, you turn it upside down to use it, and when you set it back down, all the glue goes back to the bottom of the bottle. So the next time you go to use it, if it isn't full, it takes a while sometimes for that glue to go down. This pretty much solves that problem and comes with a variety of different tips. So if you're doing wide boards, narrow, fine work, all kinds of different things, you can use these adapters. I haven't owned this very long, but after using it a few times, I would never wanna live without it again. Rare earth magnets are something that I use everywhere in my shop. I stick them to all my machinery so that I can keep things like rulers and specialty tools close by. But this little package that I bought on Amazon recently, I'm really happy with. It's a variety pack with three different sizes. And you can also use them for things like projects when you have box lids and things that you wanna to stick together. For only about eight bucks for the variety pack, they're an awesome accessory for the shop. And I'm sure you'll find all kinds of other uses for them as well. All right, I know this is a major splurge item, but this is my Incra router lift, and I saved up for a long time to buy this thing several years ago, but it's gotta be my number one favorite machine in the shop. I mean, it has completely changed the way I work. So if you can save up and set aside the budget for one, I highly recommend it. Okay, I know I said I wasn't gonna feature any sponsored items in this video, and full disclosure, Starbon did send me this little care package for free, but it was already in my Amazon shopping cart and I was about to purchase it myself. If I had spent my own money on it, I'd be just as happy. This stuff has gotten me out of a bind so many times in the shop, I don't know why I waited this long to get some. It's great for things like jig making, and anytime you need an instant bond on just about any kind of material, you apply the glue, hold the things together with your hand, and as soon as you spray it, you're done. It comes in thin, medium, and thick, and also a variety of colors like light and dark brown for different kinds of hardwoods. Don't forget to get the accelerator because that's what makes this stuff special. Another really cheap and simple accessory for the shop that I wouldn't want to do without are popsicle sticks. They're not just great for crafting, I find all kinds of uses for these things, including stir sticks, glue applicators, and even shims. One of my favorite things to do is take a pair of diagonal cutters and clip the end off so that I can modify the shape of it for whatever I need. Sometimes you can even twist them and get kind of a sharp edge like that. For only about eight bucks, you can buy a box of a thousand and that should last you pretty much forever. This little six inch ruler from Starrett is definitely a splurge coming in a little over 20 bucks. 
But what I love about it is that it has really fine markings and a matte finish so that you can read it in any light. It also has graduations that go up the edge of the ruler so you can set it down flat on a table saw or router table and measure the height of your bit or blade. But my favorite thing about it is that on the back it has tenths and hundredths of an inch. So it's almost like using the metric system but you're still in inches which is something I use a lot in my shop. It's a little pricey but for something I grab all the time to do accurate work it's my favorite ruler and I think it's well worth it. I recently got one of these Northern Tool shop stools on Amazon and I just love it. It's really comfortable, it's adjustable up and down, and it spins. So who doesn't love that? This is a silicone pastry mat that I found on Amazon and I love it for glue ups. I can just clamp something up and anything that falls on this thing peels right off. Doesn't matter if it's wood glue, epoxy, whatever. It cleans off so easily and then I just fold it up and throw it back in the drawer. These are my two favorite table saw blades. The first one is the Thin Kerf Glue Line Rip Blade, and there's a few reasons I like this blade. First of all, I started using this when I had a really old underpowered saw, and because of the thin kerf, it's not removing as much material, so it doesn't take as much power to cut through hardwoods with this thing. The other reason that's nice is if you have a really expensive material and you need to maximize the yield that you're gonna get out of it, this blade will not waste as much, so you can get a few more cuts out of that little bit of material you have left. There's a couple downsides to this blade. One of them is that it is a dedicated ripping blade, so if you do any cross-cutting on your table saw, you're gonna have to switch blades before you do that. But the other thing is because of the thin kerf, the downside to that is that you can get a little bit of wobble, especially if you're doing big, thick cuts in hardwood. So the reason I like this blade, it's a full kerf and it's a lot stiffer. So I've found you don't get any of that wobble and the cut can come out a little bit cleaner in certain types of wood. The other nice thing about this is that it's a combination blade. So you can leave the same blade on your table saw and do joinery, cross cuts, ripping, whatever you want. It also has that raker tooth that's flat, so you can get a nice flat bottom to your cuts if you're doing dados. Both blades are really good quality and last a long time. I highly recommend these for super smooth cuts. This is by far the most expensive thing on this list. I know it's a major splurge. I saved up for a long time before I could afford one of these, and about 10 years ago when I couldn't afford one, I actually built my own drum sander. This is the 16 to 32 drum sander by Supermax, and I know it looks a little weird because it's on a short stand. I made a custom stand for it so that it would fit under my drill press, but these things are beasts of a machine in a small shop, and there's a reason they call these things time savers. Enough said. If you've ever used double stick tape around your shop for jigs or router templates, but you've been frustrated with your results, you might be using the wrong kind of tape. I would never use the foam kind or anything thick, but this is carpet tape. It's perfectly flat and very useful around the shop. The best way to use it, I find, is to take an X-Acto knife, cut from the middle out, and then rip it the rest of the way. Once you stick it down, use that same X-Acto knife to pry up the corner, and the rest peels right off. You can't see it on my bench because it's clear, but this stuff is incredibly strong. I wouldn't use too much because you might not be able to get anything apart, but just use a few little strips on your workpiece and then it will peel off when you're done. And by the way, as much as I love my Starbond for all kinds of uses around the shop, I don't do the CA glue and masking tape trick because I just think this stuff is quicker and easier to use, gives just as good, if not better, of a bond, and I don't have any risk of squeeze out with glue getting on a workpiece, and I also don't have to smell the fumes that unfortunately are a side effect of CA glue. All right, but my number one top pick for must-have items for your shop is, of course, the Weber Woodshop T-shirt. It comes in unnecessary walnut brown, it is 100% cotton, it is 100% sawdust proof, and it is 100% guaranteed that you will make it rad. There's only one way to get these t-shirts and that is by signing up and joining me on Patreon, but for only 12 bucks, I'll send you a t-shirt, I'll send you a sticker, and I'll be putting your name in the credits on my next video. Thanks again for the support, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please let me know what are some of your favorite tools? What did I leave out? Or is there something that you see me use that you wanna know more about? And maybe I can post a link for that too. Happy woodworking, everybody, and I'll see you later. A huge thank you to all of my supporters on Patreon, especially Antonio Magtoto, Kevin Mib, and Jason Willoughby. If you'd like to support my channel and also get a shout out on one of my videos, just find me on Patreon. See you later.